This is the second part of the lesson. It has to deal with the measures of dispersion. Um, dispersion is just the uh, spread of the data. Are the values close together? Are the values spread out? Um, so here I have two test scores, two groups of test scores, one in a math class and one in an English class. And if we found the mean of each of these, we would find that the mean for both of them is uh, 75. So having a 75, you would know you were in the middle of each class, but having an 85, you would be in number two in the English class and number one in the math class. So there has to be another way of how to measure where you stand in your class dependent upon the dispersion of the data. And um, a few easy ones for dispersion would be um, the range. And the range is just basically big minus small. The biggest value that you have uh, minus the smallest value you have. It's not a very powerful measurement, but the top book talks about it. So for the first one, it would be uh, 85 minus uh, 65, giving you a range of 20 units. And the second one would have a range of 95 is the big one and 55 is the small one. And that would be a range of 40, twice the distance of the first one. So this first data is close together, statistically, and the second data set is spread out. Uh, and, and that's what we want to talk about with mes measures of dispersion. And the first one we're going to really get into is called the standard deviation. Uh, the standard deviation is basically the average distance of the data from the mean. And the book way of doing the standard deviation is this ugly formula, and it's not really that bad. This big summation sign out front just means add them all up. So basically we're going to take our x's, we're going to subtract this thing called x bar. Now x bar, that just means the mean. It's a fancy way of writing down what the mean is. So in this first column we're going to get uh, 55 minus uh, the mean. Now the mean of 55, 60, 65, 70, 75 is, happens to be the middle number here, 65. So we're going to do x minus x bar, the mean. This turns out to be negative 10. And be careful with negative numbers. Uh, the formula says, you know, subtract them. Take that answer and square it. So we're going to take negative 10 and square it and come up with 100. And we're going to do this to each one of them. This one will be 60 minus 65, the mean. It will be negative 5. And negative 5 squared is 25. And if we keep doing this, we're going to come up with something that looks like this where we have negative 10 squared is 100, negative 5 squared is 25, 0 squared is 0, 5 is 25, and 10 squared is 100. And the summation symbol just means take all of these squares and add them all up. So we're going to take 100 plus 25 plus 0 plus 25 plus 100, better known as 250. So that gets replaced into this whole spot here. The sum of those numbers is 250. So you get this 250. And this n minus 1 is just one less than how many data you have. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data spots. So n is going to equal 5, but then we're going to take away 1. So this becomes 250 divided by 4, which uh, gives you, oh, let's see here, 62.5. So this becomes the square root of 62.5. Most calculators, it'll be second um, x square button, and it'll give you the symbol, the square root, and it'll put a parentheses up there, and then just type in 62.5. Your answer should be really close to 7.9. I probably rounded this, and the same rounding rules effect. If there are no decimal places here, you're going to put at least one decimal place in your answer. So the average distance from the mean of this data is about 7.9 units. Um, my way of doing it, I like this way better because you don't have to go find the mean at all. This is just based on the x's and the x squares. So we're going to take the x's and we're going to square all of them. So this will be 55 squared, 60 squared, 65 squared, and so forth and so on. And we'll end up with something that looks like this. Uh, 55 squared is this number, 60 squared, and so forth and so on. And the formula says we're going to add up the x's, the sum of the x's right here. And to do that, we're just going to add up these numbers. So after we add them all up, 
to get 325. And if we add up the other numbers, the 3025, the 3600, and so forth and so on, we're going to get 21,375. And the way the formula works is pretty much this way. We're going to call this the big number, and we're going to call that the small number. Uh, relatively, that's true. And the big number is going to go first, because that's the sum of the x squares, which is this column. And we're going to get 21,375 minus the sum of the small numbers, 325, and that's going to get squared. So it's going to be 325 square just that number, and we're going to divide by n. And n is how many are there? Well, there's five of them. So we'll divide by five, and then we'll do the same thing, that n minus one, so this will be four, and then we'll take the square root of that whole number. Now if you type this top number into your calculator, you get... So that gives us the square root of, again, 250 over four, just like before. So this is also um, equal to 7.9, if I remember right. Yeah, 7.9. So the standard deviation of this data is 7.9. When we get back into class, I'm going to show you how to do all of this on your calculator without going through all these uh, messy steps. And that's all I want you to be able to do for now. So here's your homework. Now this first one is um, 12, let's see here, this is 12.2, and the second one is 12.3. So make sure you do the checkpoints in 12.2 and 12.3, and then page 696, 1 through 35 odd, and page 705, 17 through 28, no hiccup. Um, and I'll see you on Tuesday, and then the test will be Thursday after that. Thanks, bye.